Let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, and that, of course, is fractions. And I know a lot of you out there saying, fractions, this video is about fractions. You're just so happy. You're like, I can't wait. Maybe your hair is standing up. You're like, oh, I love fractions. Well, that's excellent. So let's uh, go ahead and get into what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about how to uh, change mixed number fractions, and this is a mixed number fraction, into an improper fraction. Okay, this is important. And we're going to need to know uh, how to do this. Now, 99.9% .9 of you already learned this. Okay, you may have forgotten uh, how to do this, and this is not difficult at all. So I'm going to go through and uh, uh, do a little quick refresher on the procedure to change a mixed number fraction to an improper fraction, and then we'll do a few practice problems. But um, we're also going to talk about the definition of what a mixed number fraction is, an improper fraction, and a proper fraction, because um, these various descriptions of fractions are important. But uh, we're going to get to, by the way, let me just say, if you know how to do this, you're like, I already know what you're talking about. Go ahead and put, do this and put your answer in the comment section, and we'll compare notes here in a second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's get into uh, fractions, everyone's favorite topic. And I know you're just like, wow, okay, let's get into this. All right, let's get into this. Okay, so we're talking about fractions. Let's go ahead and get some definitions down. So I have proper, uh, improper, and mixed numbers. So what we're doing in this video, we're talking about how, go, how to go from a mixed number fraction to an improper fraction. But what is a proper fraction? What is an improper fraction? And um, what is a mixed number fraction? Well, let's just quickly talk about this. So a proper a fraction is something like two-thirds, and the improper fraction is something like five uh, halves, and a mixed number fraction is something like three and two-sevenths. So I wrote these down because by if you just look at these, you can kind of tell the difference, hopefully, right? So what's different between a proper and improper fraction? Well, if you're picking up uh, on the fact that the numerator uh, for a proper fraction is smaller than the denominator, well, then you would be absolutely right. So anytime this top number, which is called the numerator, is smaller than this bottom number, which is called the denominator, that's a proper fraction. Now, when the numerator, in this case, it's five, okay, when it's greater than the denominator, like this, okay, like five halves, well, this is an improper fraction. And we can take improper fractions and convert them into mixed numbers, right? That's a separate video, but just real quick, what we're going to do is take that numerator and divide it by the denominator, and we can uh, rewrite an improper fraction as a mixed number, okay? So a mixed number fraction is something like this. We have three and two uh, sevenths, and we could take this fraction and write this as an improper fraction. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So I kind of basically uh, told you how we can go from an improper to a mixed number, but uh, we're going to be focused in specifically uh, on how to rewrite a mixed number as an improper fraction. Okay, so let's get to it. It's not that difficult. We all learned it way back in the good old days. Let's get into this. So we have four and two thirds. Um, how do we do this? Okay, well, here is how we, let me actually rewrite this a little bit clearer. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna write, the, write it this way, four and two thirds. So stylistically, let me actually do this a little bit better. Uh, four and two thirds, whether you write your fractions this way, like two thirds or two thirds, um, it doesn't make a difference on its surface. Okay, so if you've been used to writing fractions like this or like this, um, either way is fine. However, I'm gonna um, suggest that you get used to kind of using a straight uh, horizontal fraction bar, okay? Just kind of makes things a little bit easier, that slash. And although there's nothing technically wrong with it, I kind of uh, interchange the two from time to time. But when we see this little horizontal uh, fraction bar like that, it's a little bit easier to see this. So what we do to go from a mixed number fraction to a uh, proper fraction, or improper fraction, excuse me, is we take this little denominator, okay, three, right here, we're going to multiply it by the big number. And by the way, you know, this number, you write it bigger than this little fraction. So that's going to be three times four. Okay, we're going to multiply here, and then we get that result. What is that? 
Well, that's going to be 12, okay? And then we're going to add this top number, okay? So I don't want to, uh, you know, write this where it's confusing. I think it's just uh, easier for me to just show you. So 3 times 4 is 12, okay? We'll put that there. And then we add this number, 2. That is our numerator. And then we just keep this as our denominator, okay? So 3 times 4 is 12 plus this little number right here, 2, is uh, going to be 14 over 3. Okay, let's do this uh, more than a few times. Now I'm going to do this again over here. So 4 and 2 thirds. I'll keep this with the slash here, the little vertical uh, slash. So you're going to go, okay, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14 over, and then you keep this little denominator, 3. Okay? All right, so hopefully, you know, uh, yeah, you're not confused with this because it's a pretty direct, straightforward procedure. So if you understand that, let's go ahead and practice this uh, with these few problems here just to make sure you got this down. So here we go. Here is three problems. I would suggest you pause the video, go ahead and uh, write your answers down. If you want to put them in the comment section, that's fine as well. But we're going to do these three problems here real quick, and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, so uh, did you pause the video and uh, do these problems? It's better that you uh, do the problems instead of uh, watch me do the problems first. But I'm going to go ahead and answer this right now. So let's get to it. So 2 and 1 half, let's write this mixed number fraction as an improper fraction. So it's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1 is going to be 5 halves. Okay, so we got that right. Let me give you a nice little check mark. Let's move on to our next problem. Okay, so 3 times 3, which is what? 9 plus 2 is 11. Okay, so 9 plus 2 is 11 over that little 3 right there. And that is the answer, 11 thirds. All right, so this is not that difficult. And if you can't do some of this mental math, then break it down and, you know, uh, write. Just remember, it's always multiplication. Okay, then you get that answer. Then you're going to add it to that little uh, numerator over there. Okay, so it's multiplication. Oops, uh, multiplication first and then addition. All right, let's finish up with this last problem. 9 times 5 is what? 45. 45 plus 1 is 46 over 9. Now, one thing that you want to keep in mind, by the way, if you got that right, then that's excellent, is when you get your final answers, uh, always reduce. So if you end up with something like 4, uh, uh, well, let me just do something a little better. Let's say you had 12 thirds as your final answer. Okay, which of course, yeah, in this uh, situation, what are you going to have? Well, 12 divided by uh, 3 is 4, so that's a, that's a bad example. But I guess let me just not even try to make up an example right now because something good is coming to mind. The thing is this. Always look at your answers when you're done with fractions and make sure you can fully simplify. Always reduce your answers. Never leave something like... 500 over 1,000, turn that in because your teacher will be like, come on now, uh, give me a break. Just call that one half, right? You always want to reduce and simplify. But uh, if, uh, you know, if you've been having trouble changing mixed number fractions into improper fractions, again, you know, it doesn't have to be that difficult. What I think is difficult for students is they confuse things. They're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I forgot that or they'll do another procedure for something else. They'll start mixing things up. And that is the result of um, not practicing enough or not getting clear instruction, not taking good notes, not being organized, okay? But certainly not practicing because it's one thing to mentally look at something or visually look at something and be like, oh, I understand that, I remember that. Well, you're not gonna retain that unless you practice. And you gotta practice a considerable amount. Remember, math is a skill. It's just like, um, it's, it's the same thing as if you were going to shoot, you shot a basketball. You're like, oh, look, I made the uh, basketball hoop. I made it, therefore, I must um, be super good at shooting basketballs. And I bet you, if I shot this basketball a thousand times, I would get this hoop every single time, right? Well, that's not the case, right? Just because you did one problem and got lucky doesn't mean if you've done it 10, 12, 20, 40, 100, you're going to be able to, you know, keep that skill up. So you got to practice. Math is a skill, but uh, hopefully this little video helps you out. But my goal is to help you um, 
be successful in mathematics, okay? I really try to teach in the clearest, most understandable way so everyone can get this stuff. But you got to be willing to put your part in as well. So if you have the desire uh, to learn, then, you know, I could definitely help you out. But uh, my best math help will always be within my math help program. And uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.